we got separated from our unit and uh, we marched all that night and we had a 57 recoilless rifle, 57 recoilless rifle. It's a very, very good uh, light weapons infantry because it, it fires a shell about that big around. We had a gunner that was an expert. He put three 57 rounds in a bunker door at a thousand yards. Pretty good. Anyway, we carried that weapon and we were carrying five rounds of ammunition, each ammo bearer. And when we were just exhausted, we couldn't carry it anymore. We, the 57 rounds come in, uh, a cellophane package. And we took our knives and poked holes in the cellophane to ruin the shell so they couldn't use it against our troops. And then we took the breech block off the uh, 57. We threw the 57 barrel away because we couldn't do anything with that. But we took the breech block and we had our entrenching tools and dug a hole and buried it. Then we dug another hole and buried the log book in case they, so they wouldn't know how to put the thing together and use it. Anyway, and we, we kept going and then uh, we saw some uh, army vehicles. We thought we were home free and clear and came down off this mountain, walked right into ambush. They were captured vehicles. And so we got away from that one. We lost one guy there that got shot in the thigh. And then about two o'clock in the afternoon, we're, we're walking down this ridge line, and in the infantry, you're not supposed to do that. But in Korea, you don't have much choice because of the mountains. You can't walk, and there was a forest there too. Through the forest, I mean, you, it would take forever to go someplace. And I think the Chinese saw us, and they were waiting a little further down the trail. And they would have had us dead to rights. And for some reason, the uh, platoon sergeant walked down this hill, mountain, really, across this little valley and upside the next one. And I was the last man. And I uh, heard a funny sound. We dropped off the ridge line. And uh, I heard this swish, swish. And it was a dry season. It was the 25th of April, 1951. And uh, the Chinese wear tennis shoes, or they did then. And it was tennis shoes running, hitting the dust that I heard. And I turned around, and they probably were 150 feet away, pretty close. And I shouted and started shooting. And uh, they threw a concussion grenade at me. Now, a concussion grenade in here in a room would do a lot of damage. Blow out your eardrums and messes you up. You bring concussions, all sorts of nasty things. But out in the open, it it dissipates, but it was, if it had been a fragmentation grenade, it probably would have killed me. But as it was, it knocked me down. And the guy said, yeah, now that cloud of dust came Spurbeck, Hollandaise. And I ran down the side of that mountain and halfway up the side of the next mountain, finally, I just couldn't breathe anymore. I didn't realize it knocked the air out of my lungs, and I was just running on adrenaline. And finally, I couldn't breathe anymore. I crawled under this big rock. And when I got my breath back, I could hear the guys shooting in, in the Chinese army. They don't chase you. They figured, let the next group do that. And uh, so when I crawled off me this rock, they'd see me go under the rock. And when I when I crawl when I crawled out, this one Chinese soldier hollered at me to surrender. And I jumped behind a little pine tree about 
that big. And I had my carbine pointed at him, and he's got his just holding it in his hand. And I figure, I can take this guy. But I can see 180 degrees to the side. And I saw some movement over on my left, and I looked, and his buddy was over there with his rifle cocked, loaded, ready to shoot. And I shoot left-handed. And so I was on the right side of the tree, which meant I could shoot the first guy, but then I would have to lift my weapon, turn, pivot, and shoot at the second one. The guy's already got me in his sights. There's no way that you can do that and get away with it. And besides, if I shot the first guy, the second guy would be a little angry. So I very reluctantly put down my weapon and, and surrendered. And that was my start of the journey with the Chinese for 27 months and three weeks. And I had amoebic dysentery. And when you get sick, really, really sick, um, you retreat into a dream world. And, the, and that isn't just for prisoners, that's many, many cases, even in, the, in civilian life, when you, you see somebody that's terminal and they'll, they retreat into this dream world, it's the brain's way of protecting you. You don't think of the grief and misery. And I was living in a dream world, and I would lay there on the f floor, and I would think of uh, home and uh, roast beef and mashed potatoes and brown gravy and and green beans and uh, hot chocolate and hot cider, um, deep dish apple pie a la mode. And I would concoct all these menus, or I would think of pleasant meals that I had. And my squad leader had seen how I was going, and he told me to go on sick call. And he went somewhere, and he came back, and he said, what did they tell you on sick call? I said, I didn't go on sick call. They're not going to do anything for me. He said, you, you know how sergeants are. Uh, he was a corporal, and uh, but he was a squad leader, and he jerked me up off that floor, and he said, you stupid SOB, what did I tell you to do? And, and jerked me down to this Chinese company commander's hooch and screamed and hollered at him and said, he's got to go on sick call. He's got to go on sick call. If he doesn't go on sick call, he's going to die. <laughs> Took a lot of guts. So they sent me on sick call. And uh, they sent me with a guard, and I could put one foot in front of the other one. And the guard didn't have a weapon or anything. Where was I going to go? What was I going? I couldn't have run fifty feet. And uh, so they got down there, and they looked at me, and they gave me a shot. I, was, I don't know what. Oh, well, I remember was it hurt like hell. And I was, they had me sit down at this table, and I sat down, and I, first time in my life I fainted. And the last thing I remember was I had long hair. I hadn't had a haircut in probably four or five months. And uh, I was holding my hair to keep my, to keep my head up. And finally, when I passed out all the way, thunk, my head hit that table, 